Neon lights are colorful, bright, and reliable, so you see them used in signs, displays, microwave detectors, electronic equipment, and even on the historical building. Have you ever wondered, how they work, and how different colors of light are produced? The neon lamp is a type of gas discharge lamp. When an electric voltage is applied to the electrodes, enough energy is supplied to remove an outer electron from the neon atoms. If there is not enough voltage, there will not be enough kinetic energy for the electrons to escape their atoms, and nothing will happen. The positively charged neon atoms are attracted to the negative terminal, while the free electrons are attracted to the positive terminal. So, where does the light come from? Atoms in the tube are moving around, hitting each other. They transfer energy to each other, plus a lot of heat is produced. While some electrons escape their atoms, others gain enough energy to become excited. This means they have a higher energy state. The electron can return to its original energy, the ground state, by releasing that energy as a photon of light. The color of the light, that is produced, depends on how far apart, the excited energy is from the original energy. So, each excited electron of an atom releases, a characteristic wavelength of photon. In other words, each excited noble gas releases, a characteristic color of light. For neon, this is reddish-orange light. Chlorine vapor lamp produces green, hydrogen produces blue light, sodium forms yellow light whereas mercury gives white light, and nitrogen produces red light. Art, deco, architecture, is synonymous with neon lighting. Thankfully, today we have much better options than traditional neon, to help maintain the art deco culture. The answer lies within the new solution to an old problem. LED neon lighting solutions have revolutionized the Art Deco style by making it more lightweight, low energy, and environmentally kind than ever before. Many LED neon strips work like the new LED Neon Flex, a strip of light that has amazing flexibility and customization. Knowing the energy of every electron orbit in Bohr's model allows us to construct an energy level diagram for the hydrogen atom. You have already seen a similar diagram when discussing the origin of the hydrogen spectral line series from Lyman to Fund. A positive proton and a negative electron attract each other. Therefore, the energy of their mutual interaction is strongest when the electron is in the first orbit and they are closest to each other. The larger the orbit, the higher the energy of the electron because a portion of energy must be supplied to overcome the proton-electron attraction. Note that the energy levels become closer together as the quantum number of the orbit increases and eventually an energy continuum is reached. In the continuum, there is no attraction between the proton and the electron. The electron is free to move, escaping the positively charged nucleus. 
This process is called ionization. When we look at the energy level diagram, it is clear that in order to achieve ionization of the atom in its ground state, we must supply the necessary portion of energy that is sufficient to excite the electron to the continuum state. This energy is termed ionization energy. Ionization energy is the minimum energy needed for the complete removal of an electron from a gaseous atom or ion in its ground state. The unit of ionization energy is kilojoule per mole. An atom is ionized when an electron is removed from n equal 1, 2, n equal to infinity. The value of ionization energy can be calculated by using the following equation. You are already familiar with the equation for the energy of the electron in an orbit of quantum number n, where Rh is a constant derived from Planck's constant, the mass and charge of the electron. The value of Rh is 2.18 times 10 to the power of minus 18 joules. Therefore, the energy of the electron in the ground state is minus 2.18 times 10 to the power of minus 18 joules, while the energy of the free electron in the continuum is the difference in energy between these two states is Therefore, the ionization energy of the hydrogen atom is 2.18 times 10 to the power of minus 18 joules. Notice that the ionization energy is the same as the Rh constant and is equal to the ground state energy but with the opposite sign. Now let us calculate the ionization energy of hydrogen expressed in joules per mole and compare it with the experimentally determined value. The ionization energy of a single hydrogen atom is You already know that the value of Avogadro's number Na tells us how many particles there are in one mole of the element. This means that one mole of hydrogen contains 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules since hydrogen exists as molecules, H2. Therefore, the ionization energy of hydrogen expressed in joules per mole is. This theoretical value corresponds very well with hydrogen's ionization energy determined experimentally, which is 1,312 kilojoules per mole. Very good matching of the theoretical and experimental values of ionization energy confirms that the simple Bohr atomic model is quite useful in predicting the actual properties of hydrogen. Ionization energy is determined by detecting the wavelength of the convergence point. Eventually, the line becomes so close to each other that merge at a point that is called convergent limit. At this point, the nucleus can no longer hold the electron. The electron has zero energy and freely to move. Therefore, the convergent limit is on the left-hand side, whereas, the first line is on the right. Ionization energy is the minimum energy needed for the complete removal of an electron from a gaseous atom or ion in its ground state. The unit of ionization energy is kilojoule per mole.